Europe has the world's most ambitious cap and trade system for cutting greenhouse gas emissions. For six years now, thousands of factories and power plants have had to reduce their emissions or pay for their excess carbon pollution. Starting January 1st, airlines and air cargo companies must join the program, including foreign carriers that land at European airports. But countries, including the U.S., who have airlines flying into Europe, are resisting the program. The issue is shaping up to become an international showdown over what it means to get serious about global warming. From France, FSRN's Liam Moriarty reports. Steve Lott and his colleagues are not happy with Europe these days. We believe that the EU emissions trading scheme, as proposed, is not only illegal under international treaty and international law, but it's also bad policy. Lott is with Airlines for America, the trade group for the U.S. airlines industry. The group filed a lawsuit against the EU for requiring non-European airlines to meet the continent's greenhouse gas emissions targets or pay up. And while they say it's illegal to force them to take part in the EU program, Europe's highest court last week upheld the law. Nonetheless, Lot says the Europeans are going about it backwards. The aviation industry, different from, say, a factory or a power plant, emits across international borders and emits across the globe. So a global industry needs a global approach when it comes to emissions and the environment. The U.S. government agrees. State Department spokeswoman Victoria Newland told a press briefing in Washington last week that the U.S. was disappointed that the European court upheld the EU plan to force foreign aviation into its emissions program. There are mechanisms in international aviation for addressing the question of greenhouse gas emissions, and that's where these things should be talked about. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton recently sent a stern letter urging the European Commission to drop the January 1st deadline. If not, she warned, the U.S. would be compelled to take appropriate action. This kind of diplomatic saber-rattling has been coming from a growing number of other countries as well. China, India, Russia, Brazil, and others have threatened trade sanctions or other retaliation if the Europeans proceed. Meanwhile, European airlines are nervous. They fear they'll take the brunt of any foreign sanctions. They're also worried that if foreign carriers refuse to comply, they'll be left at a competitive disadvantage. They want the EU to go back to working on a global emissions program. If EU officials are feeling the heat, they're not showing it. Climate Action Commissioner Connie Hedegaard recently said there was no way Europe would back down from its climate policy. But given the intense and widespread opposition, why doesn't Europe just work on that international solution everybody's talking about? Bill Hemming says that's a good idea as far as it goes. But that doesn't mean, in the meantime, Europe should drop tools and do nothing. Hemmings is with Transport and Environment, a Brussels-based environmental group. He points out that it was 1997 when ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, was tasked by the UN with crafting a global agreement for cutting greenhouse gases from airplanes. Fourteen years later, he says, there's little to show for it. They ruled out fuel taxation even before the Kyoto Treaty. They then ruled out a levy. They ruled out efficiency standards for new aircraft. They ruled out in 2004 a global emissions trading system. In short, Hemmings says, the aviation industry has shown it's simply not serious about climate change. ICAO did agree last year to a goal of capping aviation carbon emissions in 2020. The industry counters that aviation is a minor factor in climate change, accounting for only 3% of the world's greenhouse gas output. But Torben Krentz with Concedo, a green think tank in Copenhagen, says that's misleading. Is quite a lot, actually. Krintz points out that all the personal cars in the world contribute just 6% of global carbon emissions. He says research has also shown that aviation emissions have a disproportionate greenhouse gas impact. They're emitted high in the atmosphere, they create a lot of water vapor, they form ozone, so they do more damage than other emissions. Krintz also says that industry assertions that aircraft fuel efficiency has dramatically increased are true, but... People are flying more and more. And the reduction in the emission is lower than the expansion of flying. So the total emission is going up. In fact, aviation emissions are growing faster than any other industrial sector. All of which leads Bill Hemmings from Transport and Environment to conclude that Europe is right to stick to its guns. The clock is ticking and if drastic action is not taken to 
keep global warming increase below two degrees, then the next generation is going to be in serious trouble. The Paris-based International Energy Agency last month issued a report saying the world is on track to pass that point of no return by 2017. Liam Moriarty, FSRN, Normandy, France.